Hi, this is Klaus Hermann from Farbspielfoto.com and in this episode of Hands-on Photo Tips I'm going to show you how to create a vignette non-destructively. Now, vignetting is usually something that you try to avoid or remove from an image when it's coming from a wide-angle lens that darkens the edges and the corners of your image. But if you use it creatively in your post-processing, it can really help you create more depth and a more appealing composition. So, here we are in Photoshop CS6. We've ha we have our sample image already opened. It's a church panorama and you see that we've got this central element here at the back of the church. We've got some nice curved leading lines pointing towards this area, also here at the bottom. And we've got some framing elements, for example this wooden part here on the ceiling. The only problem with this image is that we also have some distracting elements here on the edges. Now these elements are important for the composition and they should stay in the image, but these areas are really bright and they in fact may take away the attention of the viewer from this element that we want to direct him to towards the edges. And that's obviously not ideal. So what, sh what can we do about this? We can create a vignette which leaves this part of the image untouched and this part of the image is darkened by the vignette. Now there are at least a dozen different ways of creating a vignette in Photoshop and some of them are destructively and some of them are non-destructive. So destructive editing means that we actually change the pixels in the image while non-destructive editing means that we add a layer and we apply our effect to that layer so that we can turn it on and off and maybe even change it later on in our post-processing workflow. So before we come to the non-destructive technique, let me quickly show you two ways of adding a vignette destructively. I'm going to create a background layer copy, hitting Ctrl or Command J on the keyboard. And for the first method, I'm grabbing the burn tool. If you click and hold on that icon here in the toolbar, you can select the burn tool. You will get a brush tip and you should make that brush tip rather big so that we've got a nice soft transition. And then you can just burn you can just burn the edges of the image by painting or brushing over these edge parts. Make sure you get everything you want. and that darkens the edges of our image. So if I turn off that layer, you see the before, this is the after, and we've done a nice job of darkening the edges and directing the attention of the viewer more towards this central element of the image. But of course you see that it takes a lot of brushing and uh, you need to go back and forth with the brush to actually darken the edges enough. The second method, and I'm going to create a new copy of the background layer, the second method for uh, adding a vignette uses the lens correction filter. Go to the filter menu, choose lens correction, and the lens correction dialog will open up. And if you go to the custom tab up here, you see that you get a vignette group here with two sliders. The amount slider controls whether you lighten or darken the areas, the edges of the image. We would like to darken them, so I'm pulling the slider to the left side. And the second slider, the midpoint slider, lets you increase or decrease the area in the middle of the image that you want to retain in your vignette. If you hit OK, the filter is applied to your layer and again you can turn the layer off and on to see the before and after. As you've seen, both of these techniques apply the vignette destructively, so it actually changes the pixels of the image. Now what if you would like to change the image in other ways? For example, you would like to apply a filter to it or you would like to sharpen it. In that case, you would have to get rid of the vignette layer altogether 
apply your changes to the original image and then apply the vignette again. Of course this takes a lot of work and time and it's not really a good way to process your images. Now this is where non-destructive editing comes in and now I will show you a way of applying a vignette non-destructively. So it will reside on its own layer and you can turn it on and off and you can even change the vignette after you created it. How do we do that? The first thing that we're doing is we create a selection on the image. So you grab any kind of selection tool that you would like and create that selection. I'm creating an oval selection because it fits the image and this is going to define the area where the outside is darkened and the inside remains bright with a smooth transition be between the two parts. The, th the second thing that you are going to do is to create a fill layer. So go to the layer menu, go to the new fill layer item and choose solid color. And just click OK in this dialog and the color picker appears and you can choose the color of your new fill layer. And I'm going to make it black. Hit OK. So you've got that oval blob in the middle of your image. To make it appear more like a vignette, I'm going to select the mask and hit Ctrl or Command I to invert it. And now we've got these edges and corners of the image really black with a harsh transition to the central part. This is not the desired end result, but we can go to the masks panel, which is appearing automatically in Photoshop CS6 as soon as you select a mask. And you can use the feather slider to create a smooth transition between the two parts. Now in this case, I would say a radius of about 150, 160 pixels is okay. If your image is bigger, you would like to choose other ra another radius. So try which radius fits your image, image best. So now we're almost there. We've got a vignette, but the corners are really, really dark. To change that, I'm selecting the layer. I'm going to the opacity setting in the layers panel and I'm reducing the opacity of this new layer to a value of about, let's say, 40, 45, 46. That should be okay for this image. So you see, we've got a vignette, just as the ones that we created with the destructive tools, but it resides on its own layer, and we can turn it on and off. We can now go to this image layer and process it in any way we would like, and still we've got that vignette on top, and we don't destroy anything with that. What's even more, we can go back to this masks panel layer on, later on and, for example, change the feather radius or we could change the opacity of the layer to make the vignette more or less pronounced. Before I finish this tutorial, I would like to show you a method of turning this vignette layer into a Photoshop action. So, if you would like to apply your vignette to a lot of images, these steps that I've shown you are a lot of work. Each of them is very simple and there are a few steps only, but applying it to 10, 15 or 20 images, you would have to repeat these steps over and over again. To make this a one-click thing, we can create a Photoshop action. So. The first thing that you would like to do is to go to the window menu and enable or show your actions panel by clicking on actions. This will bring up your actions and you see that I already got a lot of actions and folders here. For the purpose of this tutorial I'm going to create a new folder. Let's call this testing. And in this folder I'm going to create a new action. So I'm going to select this folder, go down to this create new action button here, click it and the new action dialog appears and I'm going to call this new action vignette and I'm going to add selection in parenthesis at the end of the name 
to indicate that we need to do something before we start this action. I'm going to show you in a second what that means. Hit record and you see that the action is automatically starting in record mode so whatever I'm going to do is going to be recorded in that action. Now before we record something we need to do something first. As in the manual example I'm going to draw a selection over the image. This is the state where this action st actually starts. So before you um, start the action later on you always make a selection in your image to indicate the parts that should remain bright and it should not be darkened. Okay, now I'm going back to the actions panel and I hit record. Let me just close that. And now essentially I'm doing the same things that I did. I'm going to do it a bit faster. Create a new fill layer. Make it black. Select the mask. Invert the mask. Dial in a feather radius and change the opacity. And now I'm going back to the actions panel and you see all the stuff that I've just done is recorded within this, uh, this new action here that's called vignette selection. I'm going to stop the recording and now we've got this action here that we can run. Let me just remove the vignette that we've just created and now I can select something. Let me select another part, a smaller part of the image and we run this new action with the play button down here in the actions panel and you see that automatically with the selection that I did a new vignette is created. I can go in here, change the feather radius, I can change the opacity and we've got full non-destructive editing. With this little trick you can now add an arbitrary vignette to any of your images with just a single click of your mouse. This finishes our tutorial on non-destructive vignetting. Thanks for listening and bye bye.